Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, I'll be discussing my thoughts on episode 7 of the anime series, Everything Becomes F the Perfect Insider. And, um, okay, uh, half the episode is in Japanglish. <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting. Um, I have to admit, it was a little childish. I was laughing through that sequence. Um, and, you know, because, I mean, a lot of it sounded kind of like when you call up one of those automated, you know, directory lines or something, where the language is kind of weird, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, it was definitely interesting. One of the things I was left with at the tail end of the previous episode, speculation-wise, was building off of an earlier speculation that could, you know, Dr. Magata have basically insinuated herself into her sister's life you know take on the persona of mickey magata and it was actually mickey who was the body the corpse that we're seeing that everyone is presuming to be you know the genuine dr magata because everyone's talking about how she looks so much younger and here is this older you know seemingly older looking woman mickey magata could this just be a case of another sort of, uh, you know, one of those personalities, like maybe she took on the personality of her sister and she's embodying the persona of her sister. Because in this conversation between she and Saikawa, there are a few points that are a little odd, you know, where effectively she's talking about the journal where she tries to remember things. Like, is that just the weird wording there? Or is she actually having memory trouble? Does she have to keep certain personalities in her own mind straight you know if this is actually dr magata he mentions not having met her and she's kind of surprised for a moment like oh yeah that's right i mean no we haven't met you know instead of <laughs> you haven't met you know um i was wondering if that was what this was aligning up to be that in fact this magata miki is actually shiki and the body is miki you know um that's at least where the initial sort of speculation was and then it sort of expounded out of that final scene of the previous episode where you find out that the aunt was there she witnessed the murder of magata's parents and the uncle was there and could the aunt have then been later seduced along similar lines as the uncle had been um obviously they had a very illicit affair she was underage and everything like that whatever power whatever control she you know broke free of those shackles of her parents the control of her parents and she was free as long as she held this knife as we see toward the end of this episode that's how she considers it the uncle actually begs her asks her anyway to kill him to end his suffering to not have to live on with this torment of this scenario and so i wonder if we're actually seeing that that was this act was where a divide was then created between uncle and magata um which is an intriguing idea in and of itself you know like the idea that they've still been in cahoots for the last 15 years and then learning everyone else in this facility there's so many people that are actually they've been there for the 15 years i thought it was just magata and the director and maybe there was you know interchange of personnel and things like that over the course of that <laughs> decade and a half but no, apparently even the security guards, they've been here for the last 15 years. So it's kind of interesting that. And some of the weird people that work there, the very sort of <laughs> horny office worker lady who tries to get really up close and personal to Nishina Sono and all of that kind of stuff. But I mean, I began wondering after the end of the last episode, could we have seen a, a sort of continental divide in who Magata Shiki was, you know, sort of going after as far as like, could she have seduced the aunt and could she and the aunt, you know, now that she's taken on the persona of her younger sister, if that is, you know, plays out to be true, could this in fact mean that aunt and Shiki have now an illicit relationship? Or I guess since they're both of adult age, it's not so much illicit anymore, but if she was married to the director, it still kind of is and... <laughs> You know, I mean, that is like this episode just hit me like a big WTF once again, um, from the Japanglish to the entire sequence. At first, you're kind of hinted and I'm like, are we even going to see what Nishina Sono's going through in this like virtual reality tub thing, <laughs> you know, decked out in a bikini, of course, um, to this other woman's delight and viewers delight, I guess. Um, a little fan servicey, which I wasn't expecting in this particular kind of a series. But, I mean, she's running around with this flamboyant Saikawa who's doing the moonwalk. 
all this kind of stuff. Michael Jacksoning out with the uh, eye drops, and he runs up a wall. She runs up after him. You got the blocks there. And all of this frolicking, for all intents and purposes, is interrupted, of course, by Mishiru, the, the seeming personality of Mishiru. And what's really boggling my mind at that point is, is this strictly out of the mind of Nishina Sono? Or is this some sort of nth level AI in communication with her, interfacing with her through this, you know, virtual reality tub thing? And that speaks to one of my earliest sort of reactions and speculations to the series is, you know, because of how Magata is, this, this scientific prowess she represents, and the computer, you know, sort of aspects to that. The, she's like a high-level hacker, and they're talking about, well, the systems were apparently deliberately made and designed to, you know, malfunction at a given time and all this kind of stuff. The misdirection there, the only one who seems to have had that level thus far revealed to us to be able to do those kinds of things, manipulate the system along those lines, would be Magatashiki. So I began to wonder, had she sort of created an AI? And, you know, has she somehow transferred her own mentality into computer form to a point where it reacted to her realistically enough that she felt her body could die. She could physically die. You know, this is going back to the idea that this is actually Magatashiki's corpse. That she could leave behind the shackles of that enclosure, of that human form. Touching base again on the speculation that she was very much into the metaphysical and thinking of growing beyond your body. That your body contains the soul and that essence escaping it and, and freeing itself. You know, everything becomes free, even though, of course, we still have Saikawa banging on with the everything becomes 15. I really am struggling to find the relevance there, other than the fact that that's how long she's been sort of encapsulated in this, you know, environment where she's been held, you know. If that's even been her all this time. And another part of me was like, are we seeing into the depths of Nishinasona's mind and the parallels between she and Magatashiki? Maybe she's the one with the multiple personalities and, you know, interacting with Saikawa. Saikawa might be a psychologist who's like her only sort of, you know, tapering off into the real world. You know, like the inside of her mind might be so confused and all this stuff might not be what we're seeing at face value. It could be all in her mind. And maybe this was like, you know, one of those scenarios where the loss of her parents, whether she killed them or they were killed in a plane explosion, whatever it was, you know, that kind of thing. Could it be, in fact, that these are warbled multiple personalities in her mind, all in conflict, and really the series is about helping the Shinasono find her way out of it, mentally, like internally, um, making sense of everything, you know, where... That, that whole psychological thing where you make up a whole new personality to escape whatever hard reality you can't face in the real world and you become someone else because you can't stand the idea of being who you left behind, who you really are. Whatever it was you experienced is so tormenting to your soul, to your mind, body, and soul. You just become someone new. And maybe this all, all this mystery and everything like that, I was thinking, you know, with these glimpses once again calling back to Nishina Sono's familial loss. And of course, much as I speculated, we have the answer right here. Saikawa was, in fact, by her side, even at the airport where this happened. Um, he was there to comfort and guide her. And maybe this is symbolic. Maybe it's symbolic if this is something that's happening in Nishinasono's mind. Maybe it's symbolic of his being the one sort of soul heir to the real world, to whatever is on the outside, and she very much needs to escape it, you know. I mean, that would be highly intriguing and compelling, but it wouldn't really reveal for us any sort of murderer who was behind all these events. And sort of the clear-cut assumption is, from the get-go, that somebody <laughs> murdered Magatashiki. She seems to have seen it coming. 
And again, looking at the parallels between Nishinasono and Magatashiki, they looked very similar in childhood. They have very similar personalities. There's so much of the things that they say and they think that are kind of similar, but at the same time, Nishinasono has, you know, a much more flamboyant personality when you compare her to, say, Saikawa or even what we know of. Magatoshiki, and there's no real bearing there to say, well, they're different people, absolutely, because different personalities can be stark in contrast. So, I mean, I don't know where I'm left by the end of this, with the exception of the fact that the revelations in some of the dialogue, the Japanglish dialogue between Saikawa and Magatomiki, definitely have me suspicious of her that much more as well as also considering the fact that it's just misdirection once again, um, there's still very much the possibility that the ant was seeking a sort of vengeance for 15 years, you know, a decade and a half of just the strife of dealing with these two murderers who were like, you know, keeping her in check, being commanding over her, holding her down. Conversely, it could be very different. It could have been flipped on its side where Magatashiki in the aftermath of killing her parents, you know, the uncle very much became the puppet to Shiki and the aunt was who she set her sights on. So there's something between them and maybe they orchestrated this together out of an illicit love affair that followed on from the one between she and her uncle. Because of course, Mickey asks Saikawa pointedly, why do you want to know what happened to my sister? Like, what stake do you have in any of this? Why won't you just leave it alone? Go away. We'll figure it out. You're not part of this. And it speaks to that idea. I mean, <laughs> you know, there's a very good possibility that I'm way off, but I just feel like there's still aspects of the characterizations and the dialogue back and forth that could very much see Magatashiki having taken on her sister's persona, you know, the theft of identity. They killed her. They killed the director just out of a, another sort of, you know, a renaissance crime of passion where Shiki is now embodying her own sister's visage and she's got this illicit affair going on with her own aunt. <laughs> you know, um, all of these things. All of these things are what I'm considering by the end of this episode. And um, that's, that's all I can really talk about. I mean... <laughs> You know, I'm not going to recount every last little event that happened in this episode. Um, but, of course, we have lingering effects like Mickey's uh, gift of a doll having gone missing, the bag she was carrying it in, the, do the doll itself. Um, there's still, you know, questions about Magatashiki's environment. Was she living there with someone, if it was even her to begin with? You know, that kind of thing. And um, so I really hope we're going to cut to the chase at some point here and actually figure this stuff out because it's just like WTF. Let's let's figure something out here. Let's start feeling like we're moving forward in the procedure of figuring out this mystery. And um, so, yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below if you were as wowed by the Japanglish as I was. I don't mean to keep harping on it, but it was just it was so awkward and unexpected at this juncture in the game. And listening to it, like I said, it seemed unnatural. And maybe that was done for effect. Maybe that was done on purpose because maybe one of these people isn't a real person. Maybe it's an android with, you know, sort of the best AI, you know, conglomeration of the essence of Dr. Magata or something along those lines. Who knows? Um... I have no idea. <laughs> so I'd love to hear from you. What you thought of the episode, any speculations you might have, if you're on the same page as me, as just being like, huh? <laughs> What's going on? And uh, that'll be pretty much it for me on this. <laughs> Hope this video finds you well, and I'll catch you later. Peace.